Hey guys, and welcome back to my sewing room. In today's sewing tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to make this really pretty DIY prom dress, DIY bridesmaid's dress, passion dress, whatever you wanna call it, whatever you wanna use it for, that's what it is. Before we get started, I just wanted to make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button down below and turn on notifications and all measurements, fabrics, supplies are listed down below in the description box. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Can we talk about the fabric that we're using today? It is a beautiful black stretch velvet and it is absolutely everything. Thank you to Stylish Fabrics for sending it to me. I will have their link below in the description box for you guys to go ahead and check them out. Okay, so I am gonna start with the easy part, which is the skirt. So I'm just going to take the front panels of the skirt and I'm just pinning them down the princess seams. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew them together with a one centimeter seam allowance. When I'm pinning this right side, it doesn't matter if it's the right side or the left, I'm going to go ahead and pin it down to where it starts to flare. And then I'm just going to go ahead and leave the rest of that open because we're going to do a sexy split on this skirt. And I know y'all saw the ad before this video. <laughs> Hashtag monetize. Finally, thank you guys for all your support and helping me get to where I'm at now. And let's continue to grow together. Now I'm working on the back of the skirt. I just cut the back uh, in two panels instead of having princess seams because it's, it'll just be easier for me that way. And I'm going to go ahead and measure my zipper down to where I want it to stop. And I'm going to put a pin there. And then I'm going to sew about two inches down from where the pin is. And that's going to be my little center back seam. Remember, you have to leave um, a little bit open there at the bottom to insert the godet. And also, don't mind my salvage. I left the salvage there because I was trying to get two dresses out of the amount of fabric that I had. So obviously, if you're sewing for a client, you wouldn't have that extra salvage there. So I'm going to go ahead and sew my godet in, in a little bit of an unconventional way. Uh, don't worry, the written instructions show you how to do it the correct way. But I wanted my trim to be there at the bottom, so I'm doing it this way. So I'm matching the bottom of the godet to the bottom of the skirt, and I'm going to go ahead and sew them together with the one centimeter seam allowance. I'm going to sew it all the way up to the point where the center back stops, and I'm making sure to put my needle all the way up to that point and then back stitch at that point. And don't worry, there's going to be extra godet there at the top. We're going to go ahead and address that in a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. And remembering that there's still going to be extra there at the top. So don't worry about there being extra if you're inserting your godet the same way as me. Another way to insert your godet would be to actually use just plain tool and to actually uh, cut out the trim of the lace as applique and then applique it back onto it instead of uh, using the lace piece as a whole. But Y'all know I'm being a little bit lazy. I got a couple dresses to finish in the matter of a week. So I did it this way. In effort to raise money to continue to support my channel and show all of you how I make these beautiful wedding, prom, evening, and soon to be historical gowns, the gown style that I'm sewing in today's tutorial is available for purchase. It can be sewn in any size. Also, this uh, sewing pattern and the combination of the sewing pattern and the fabrics and notions necessary to make it are also for sale. If you guys are interested in purchasing any one of these items I just mentioned, make sure to check the description box below for information on how to order. Thank you guys for your support in advance. And then I got distracted because the mail came and I've been waiting on these samples for about two weeks. Um, yeah, so I ordered just a whole bunch of different gold um, sequin samples because I'm doing a whole bunch of bridesmaid dresses. Some of them are like gold and they shift to rose gold and some of them are all rose gold. And then I have a really pretty a yellowish kind of gold. I'm not sure exactly which one I want to go with. Obviously, I'm going to send uh, my clients the samples. But which one do you guys like? Let me know down in the description box which one of the samples that you guys think will make really pretty bridesmaid dresses. And now I'm going to finish off the rest of that go day seam that I got distracted from when the doorbell rang. So I'm going to finish it off and I'm going to take it all the way up to where the center back seam stops and back stitch. And now I'm going to also trim down 
uh, all of my threads. I make sure that every time I sew a seam, I trim down all of my threads. It's just, it's necessary, guys. Okay, so now I'm addressing this back piece here. There's a little bit extra of a triangle here, right where the godet uh, meets the face fabric. So I'm going to put my needle there, and I'm just going to sew straight down from that. And then I'm also going to trim off the extra um, lace that we have. And that is how we're addressing this. Don't worry if you are doing the godet in the traditional way, you won't have this issue, but it actually turns out really neat when you do it this way as well. So there's, you know, you learn something every day. There's two ways to sew in the godet. Now I'm going to understitch, well technically in this sense, it's top stitching down my uh, seam allowance to catch that to my face so I won't roll out. And if you are using like a satin or a charmeuse or a crepe or something like that for this kind of dress, I would not recommend you top stitching it down because the stitching will be visible. This velvet is so dense that the stitching is not visible when I'm doing this top stitching like this. But like I said, if you're using a satin, I would not recommend you doing that. What I would recommend is that you actually get some lightweight muslin or you know something that has a similar kind of stretch if your fabric has a stretch like a lightweight jersey or something and you actually underline your fabric with it so that you can stitch down your seam allowance to the face side and it will be invisible to the top side because you do not want to have visible top stitching in an area that is not really uh, visually pleasing so make sure to keep that in mind with the fabrics that you're using and if you do decide to purchase the writ the written pattern it has all of the instructions as well as the fabric um, requirements for this kind of dress so don't worry you're not alone i'm here to help now I'm going to go ahead and insert my invisible zipper and I left all the steps in here in great detail about how I insert my invisible zippers. So I start with the left side and I'm going to go ahead and sew my invisible zipper to that side all the way down to where my center back seam uh, begins. And then I back stitch, and then I like to zip my zipper all the way up and then match the other side to the zipper and pin there. And then I'm going to sew another line of stitching to attach the other side of the zipper. And I like to do two rows of stitching. So I sew it a little bit further away. And then here I'm coming back in all the way, um, getting really close. You see, I'm using my finger to kind of roll out that zipper tape to make sure that my needle is getting super close to the zipper to, to the teeth of the zipper so that when I close it up, it looks like an extension of the center back seam rather than a zipper is there. And this is the point where I would do a fitting to make sure that the skirt fits. Don't mind the salvage on the back, y'all. And remember, I don't have my side seams sewn yet. This is a fitting to make sure that with the zipper inserted and everything, that the side seams still meet with enough seam allowance to go ahead and sew the side seams together. And they do. So before I sew the side seams together, I'm going to go ahead and deal with the hem of the slit. So I'm going to go ahead and do a small rolled hem here. And I'm going to go ahead and sew that together. And I tried to leave as much detail as possible in this video, you guys, to make sure that you guys get all of the steps in video form and as well as written form with the pattern. So um, I hope this is a good video style for you guys. Let me know down in the description box or well, in the comment section <laughs> what you guys think. 
Now I am gonna go ahead and sew my side seams. I'm sewing it with a one centimeter seam allowance, making sure to match both of my edges, match it edge to edge because I did not pin here. I don't like to pin with when it's long seams like this because all the pins do is poke me and fall out and get all over the place and then my son's picking them up off the floor and it's just a mess. So I just like to match them edge to edge. But if you need to pin, by all means, pin. And public service announcement, y'all. My sewing machine is literally about to die. And you could say it's because I sew through the boning. That's probably the case. Or <laughs> maybe because I sew a whole bunch and I've had this sewing machine for a long time. So I'm really looking to upgrade to an industrial sewing machine. If you guys have an industrial sewing machine, let me know what kind you have and how much you paid for it, where you got it from, all the good information, because I am in the market, y'all. I need one like ASAP because my sewing machine could not die. It is my livelihood. And this is what it looks like once the side seams are sewn. I like to go ahead and check the fit once again. So if you're doing this for a client, this could be maybe a part that you left for when your client is uh, at her, one of her first fittings to make sure that the skirt part fits. Now I have all my bodice pieces and I'm gonna put my back and my bodice panel piece to the side. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew my darts of my front bodice. I'm just using a plain tool here. This is actually the Casa Collection tool from Joann's in the color black. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pin my waist starts and my bust starts and sew them together. Let me know what you guys think about the more detailed sew along type videos. I'm planning on making a little bit more of these with all of the dresses that I'm uh, selling patterns for. So let me know what you guys think. Okay, so notice that I have my threads long here. That's because I did not back stitch at the end of my darts. I left the threads long and I'm just gonna go ahead and tie my knots off here. And then I'm gonna take um, my bodice pieces to my ironing table with a really low heat, y'all. And I'm going to uh, press all of my darts towards the center of my body. So the, uh, the waistline darts go towards the center front and the bust darts go downwards, okay? So that is gonna be how we get a neat finish there at our bodice. Now you could, um, in the pattern, there is an option to not have darts if you're using a spandex fabric or a mesh fabric, or even if you're not using a mesh for the top, there is an option uh, to not have darts. So go ahead and check that out and skip that part if you don't have darts. Okay, so now it is time to insert our little modesty panel in between our front pieces. And it is a nude illusion mesh, but obviously it ain't my nude. So if you're like me and you got a little bit more melanin going on, you might want to go ahead and go get some writ dye from the store and go ahead and dye this. Now I will have a detailed tutorial on my next wedding dress video on how to tint your mesh, your illusion mesh, so that it matches your bride's color. So you don't have to worry about uh, figuring out how to do that. Now I am taking my little monitor panel and I'm putting it right sides together. On the pattern, you should have notches here on your front bodice so you know uh, where to position this at. Now I'm just gonna pin it all the way down to, the, to where it ends and I'm gonna sew it together with a one centimeter seam allowance. Once I have that side sewn, I'm gonna go ahead and trim down my threads, of course, and then I'm going to pin right sides together to the other side, matching it up with the notch, and I'm gonna go ahead and pin that down all the way down, including the center front of the bodice as well.
and this is what it looks like once it's all sewn it actually is really nice and neat and then i'm going to go ahead and snip into one of the sides of my seam allowance at the bottom of the little modesty panel just so i can press my seam um, open Now I am doing a test fitting onto the mannequin once again, just to make sure it fits, make sure that the darts are, are in the right place and they lay nice and flat and they are. And I want to make sure that my modesty panel looks good and it does. And I have no idea what happened to the back footage, but all I did was put it right sides together and sew it with one centimeter seam allowance and then trim down the seam allowance as well as the shoulders. So here I am hemming off everything, the neckline and the armholes and everything. So I'm going to do the smallest um, rolled hem possible, well, that I can do possible. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And my advice to you is when you're doing it with tool, it's easier to do it from the face side. So when you're rolling the hem underneath, and you see I'm taking my finger and I'm kind of poking it to make sure that the hem is kind of tucked up underneath there. And then I'm pulling it taut with my left hand to make sure that the hem is going to be as small as possible. And I'm doing that all from the neckline. So from the bottom of the center front all the way up around the neckline over the shoulder down the bottom of the back. And then I'm going to do that around the armholes as well. And I think that the rolled hem gives a much more professional and cleaner finish than the bias binding. So that is why I'm doing it because when I did my research on these kind of illusion um, or well mesh panel tops, I don't really see any of the professional um, gowns having um, a bias binding around this area. I always see a really nice and tight rolled hem. So that's what I decided to do for this dress. Then when I'm getting to where my modesty panel meets my hem, I'm going to go ahead and snip into it a little bit. And then I'm going to just top stitch my seam allowance uh, to the face side so that once again, like we did on the body, uh, on the skirt, so once again, that it will not roll out. And I'm going to go ahead and take that all the way down the center front seam as well so that stays open. And I'm not worried about the visible top stitching here because we will have appliques and everything to hide all of that. And if you have a client with a bigger bust, this would be the time to add your boning in around the dart areas. You could add it on the center front on your above your darts and also at the side of the cup area as well. I decided not to do that because this is a B cup. So all I did was insert teardrop shaped um, cup pieces here. Now we're going to go ahead and hand sew this. So before I take it off the mannequin, I'm just going to pin all the way around the cup pieces, uh, well the cups to make sure that they don't shift when I'm moving. So now it is time to sew the bodice to the skirt. I'm gonna do that first before I sew the cups. I'm not sure why I did it that way, but that's what I did in the video. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and match my side seams first. And then I'm going to match my darts to my princess seams. And then I'm going to measure an inch away from my center back. And that is where the illusion panel top Ends. So I hope that makes sense, guys. If you just watch, um, I'm sure what I explained will make a little bit more sense. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here to help.
After I have that seam sewn, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back right side up, and I'm going to top stitch down my seam allowance to the top of the velvet skirt. Now, once again, if you are using a satin or something that is not velvet and that cannot hide the top stitching, I would not recommend top stitching it unless you're going to hide it with a with some kind of beaded belt or some kind of embellishments or if you're going to put your appliques there to cover it. Um, if you're not going to do that, then I would recommend the underlining method. And I feel like if you're doing special occasion garments anyway that are made from uh, fabrics that probably don't necessarily stretch, then it's good practice to underline to begin with so you would already have underlining if you're doing it in that sense and so you would just go ahead and hand stitch down your seam allowance to your face Now I'm going to hand stitch down my cups. I'm taking a really long but really bendy needle. I think this is like a beading needle. And I am putting my needle through up underneath the tool to kind of hide my knot. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm kind of grabbing the upper threads of the cup. And that's how I'm sewing it. So I'm putting my, my, um, my needle through the upper threads instead of going all the way through the cup because I don't want to see, see any visual stitching from the underside of the cup. I want the cup to look like it's like floating in place, even though we all know we hand stitched it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew, sew it like that all the way around the cups. I'm going to do the same thing for both cups. You could also use um, some Guterman glue and glue your cups down, but I would not recommend doing that if your client is a distant client and she may or may not need to have alterations done when she receives her dress because it will make it really hard for the lady who's doing the alterations to go ahead and actually do the alterations um, if you glued the cup to the to the tool because the, it, it won't come off y'all. It would rip the tool and she would have to reconstruct the whole top and that's kind of besides the point. So if you are doing um, work for yourself or work for a client that is close to you, then by all means, glue the cup. But if you are not, if you're doing something that you have to mail to your client, just hand sew it down. It makes alterations easier and you won't be having people calling you, cussing you out because they can't get their dress altered to fit them perfectly. So we have the cups all sewn in and we are nearing the finish line. The next thing to do is to spend about two days cutting out appliques, <laughs> sitting on the couch watching Vampire Diaries for no reason. Um, so yeah, I set, that's what I did. I cut out all of my appliques and now I'm going to go ahead and start pinning them on. So I took my dress form to the living room so I can watch my kids and not destroy the house. And I'm going to go ahead and pin all of my appliques on. And then I'm going to sew them. Now, once again, you could use Guterman glue to do this if you are working on a local client or if it's for yourself. But if you're doing a distant client, you might want to sew it on. And I know that sewing it on is a lot more work. And that's why when you're, uh, you have distant customers, you charge for that. So you know that when you're doing um, something for a distant customer that you have to do a lot more hand work on, then you put that into your price. That plain and simple. Um, so I know that this is for um, a customer that I'm doing. Well, not customer. I'm uh, leaving. I'm lending this dress to a photographer to do some fashion portraits of. So I know I'm going to go ahead and um, hand stitch this down just in case when I get on on location or whatever, I have to make some quick adjustments so I can actually make those adjustments because I know that if I glue them down, ain't nothing moving. Oh, and I'm going to be so upset. So I'm going to go ahead and bear the brunt of it now and take the time and hand sew it down. Don't worry. Put on your Vampire Diaries. Put on your Game of Thrones, your power, whatever you're watching. 
and just sit on the couch and hand sew it down. And here it is all hand sewn it only took me about four hours um to hand sew this down so uh, here it is and it actually looks really good i thought it kind of started to look a mess at first but i think it looks good so here i am going to go ahead and just finish off the hem and we are all done <laughs> this is what it looks like on the inside y'all it looks super neat like it looks like the cups are just floating and i just absolutely love it I'm gonna go ahead and use two inch horsehair. I buy it by the bulk like this to keep it in stock. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew it down. I'm gonna use a half a centimeter seam allowance to sew it down. And then I'm gonna flip it out and sew it down close to the edge with another half a centimeter seam allowance instead of sewing it down to the top because this is more of a, um, a fashion kind of dress rather than a prom type of dress so i wanted to make sure that um there's not like a a really visible horsehair kind of indent that you will get when you sew it down to the top and here the dress is all finished i hope you guys really enjoyed this video as much as i enjoyed making it for you i think this dress turned out absolutely gorgeous and i hope to make more dresses like this in the future so once again if you guys are interested in purchasing this dress purchasing the sewing pattern a combination of the sewing patterns and the fabrics let me know um i put all the information down in the description box on how to order and it's really not even that expensive y'all mama needs a new sewing machine mama needs a new camera so i can keep recording videos for y'all so don't forget to support me in any way that you can just watching this video is supporting me guys and i really appreciate it if you guys like this video don't forget to check out some of these other videos and i will see you guys in my next one